I don't think I ever remember a time where I didn't go to church on Sunday mornings. Uh, my dad used to be a pastor and my mom was a believer and so a big part of Sunday morning life was just getting ready for church, going to church, Sunday school, worship, and then as I got older listening to the message, going to youth events, um, even getting baptized. and. That was a big part of a lot of Sundays, but I never really made it a big part of my week in general. And so growing up where you're constantly reminded of the Bible and of you know prayer and worship, uh, a, lo a lot of ways I took it for granted, but also there was almost a motivation where I wanted to be liked by people and I wanted people to see me as just this guy who had it all figured out. And so I thought if I held myself to a standard and I did well academically, if I did well in sports, if I did with my friends, my grades, uh, and in church, if I had that all figured out, I'd be good and I'd be good with God. As I got older, especially into my teen years, I struggled a lot with sin and temptation and lust and just isolating myself from other people. And because I kept sinning and struggling and just failing over and over again, I kept telling myself I have to solve this my own way, I have to overcome it through my own strength, when in reality I was isolating myself from my sin and there was just so much shame and there was so much self-loathing. I just was starting to become sick and tired of the person that I was. As I continued to get older, God still put people in my life to encourage me, to comfort me, to build me up, to strengthen me up in my faith, uh, even when I wasn't willing to accept that fully. I remember there's this one verse that God constantly just put in my life, and it's Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30, and it says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As I continued to struggle with sin and temptation and lust, it was starting to speak to me a lot more because I realized I had been trying to overcome all my failures and all the times I messed up through my own power. Um, and I remember I was 15 years old, I was just praying to God and I just remember realizing that I hadn't surrendered everything. I was pursuing the world and trying to solve my problems through the world instead of seeking God and seeking redemption and peace from God. I had to give God everything because he wanted all of me and surrendering all of that to him because I could never get close to perfect, but his love was always perfect. And realizing the magnitude of his sacrifice and realizing that it was a free gift and that completely changed my perception of his sacrifice. I remember thinking about just his death, of the fact that he lived that perfect life and died for my sins, and just this heavy feeling of unworthiness. Like, I didn't deserve this love, but that was kind of the point of grace in the first place. And so from that, I remember just saying, okay, Lord, I'm gonna surrender it all to you. I'm gonna give you all the bad stuff. I'm gonna give you all the broken stuff. And I want you to turn this into something that can bless others and just glorify you. And from then on, there was a lot of still struggles and still times when I faltered in my faith. Now all I want to do in my life is pursue him, grow in a relationship with him because he knows everything about me and he still loves me so much. I want to grow closer to the God who loves me that much and who saved me from that. And I also want to be able to share that gift with other people. I want my eyes gazed at the Father looking at him and saying, take what little I have to offer and turn it into something beautiful, all for your glory. <laughs> Insert funny joke here, I've got nothing.